Anna B's main character is Nishi, a former cop with a rude attitude, tied to the Yakuza loan sharks because of a private debt. His wife suffers from advanced leukemia and cannot be cured. One day, Oribe, a co-worker of Nishi's, comes out of a police procedure completely paralyzed to see his own world crumble. These two tragedies provoke two different responses. Oribe, after attempting suicide, discovers painting. Nishi, advised by the doctor, chooses to spend his wife's last days beside her. As per usual, but this time more than ever, Kitano lets the interstices between two shots do the talk and create an immense gap. The tragic aspect of the story is counterbalanced by a comic one and recalled by the ruthlessness of Kitano's body shots. A moral wound scars Nishi's body and irresolutely makes an appearance in each and every close-up. The tick that spoils the expression's composure reminds his admirers of a well-known past. Kitano's beloved editing is never predictable and it won't make time go by fast. Instead, time will most likely stop. The director's unpredictable ellipses bring about a sense of wonder, alongside immense distance between the characters. For these ellipses erase the characters' interactions. A central aspect of Kitano's philosophy is represented by drama and comedy thriving together. An example of these can be found after one hour eight minutes. Nishi and Miyuki are visiting an ancient Shintoist temple and want to take a souvenir picture. Nishi grabs his film camera, sets the self-timer option on, and carefully lays the tool onto the car's window to finally run to his wife and pose for the photograph next to her. A 16-second long fixed shot matches the time period that goes from the countdown set off to the shutter click. While Nishi and Miyuki are posing still, a car rumble, getting closer and closer, eventually steals the couple's shot away. An axial cat shows as a medium close-up of the two discouraged lovers. Soon after, their sadness turns into sweet and shy laughter, lending a bittersweet and vague atmosphere to the scene which makes it hard for us spectators to decide whether to laugh or cry. These states of mind coexist. Moreover, it is their permeation to define this artwork's dignity. One more constant in Kitano's cinema is violence, ever-present but mostly off-screen. Let's take a look at the following scene, found at 20 minutes and set in a restaurant. Nishi is sitting down on his own, thinking, when two Yakuza's approach him to talk about an old debt. The movie camera carries out a panning shot to the left to point at a first man, then turns to the right where a second one is sitting. During the slow movement of the camera, just the moneylenders talk. Nishi, religiously devoted to his thoughts, ditches his silence only when called a bomb. This whole dynamic is conveyed by the off-screen and the reaction shots. We, in fact, do not witness the attack on the first Yakuza, yet we are clearly shown the bloody outcome. The following shot proves our imagination to be right through a close-up of the Yakuza's wounded eye. We eventually see the other men lying on the ground, as well as a few shots that allow us to catch sight of Nishi's kick. The recurring impossibility to react makes for one more trait of Kitano's movie's use of violence. This happens because the represented conflicts are always one-way performances. Kitano's cinematographic world does not grant any room to confront. It comes as no surprise that Nishi survives and wins over the first three quarters of the movie. Violence to Kitano never provides the purpose nor the means. In fact, it represents an inconvenience between the hero and their destiny. In order to pay off his debts owed to Yakuza, 
give the painting tools to Oribe and travel with his wife. Nishi pretends to be a policeman and robs a bank. Here's the scene just like it was written in the original script. I highly recommend you pause the video and take your time to read. Kitano's final cut is completely different from this past extract, first and foremost because of two fundamental tools, silence and reaction shots. The former makes for a light motive of this Kitano work, the latter is the cinematographic tool that allows the author to fulfill his mission of omitting violence. There's no shaken thief screaming, this is a robbery. There's also no prepared thief choosing the rear door to avoid security. Kitano rearranges the dynamic in the easiest way possible. He walks into the bank, lays his gun in a black sack on the counter, waits for the employee to come back with the money and eventually leaves. No words, no gunshots. The timeline shows the partition of the scene by classifying through colors the different reaction shots. Thus, the audience can clearly acknowledge that only six shots were used to describe the robbery. A surveillance video camera provides the establishing shot and gives the spectator two important pieces of information. The place topography and the solid certainty that Nishi doesn't care to be identified. The rest of the structure is rendered by the reaction shots of an employee, a client, the director and other colleagues. Around Nishi, everything seems to run smoothly, 1 minute 30 seconds into the scene, and the employee is back to give him the money. The protagonist takes it and peacefully leaves the bank while captured by the video camera. As soon as Nishi exits the door, the girl at the counter runs to her superior. A sudden cat takes us outside the bank, where Nishi ironically meets two police cars. The great use of reaction shots, which often cannot even be defined as such since the displayed subjects are kept in the dark about what is occurring, results in an atmosphere of time suspension. Once more, Kitano's essence, this time put in a mainstream and typically action context, turns out to be just what it always is. Preface weight, off-screen action, and final result. This bank robbery does not make for the first setup by Kitano. In fact, the previous year, Kitano's Getting Any brought to the big screen even four examples of it, organized through an unmistakable style. As a sign of sincere admiration for Kitano's work, I'm going to show you some of these. No comment here is needed. え、順番になりの。The chosen scene may be found at 1 hour 20 minutes. Nishi and Miyuki are stuck in the middle of a road covered with snow. His fitting snow chains to the tires while she is sitting at the driver's seat, ready to accelerate when required. At Nishi's signal, his wife releases the brake, but can't shift the gear, ending up with crushing Nishi's hand. Kitano structures this moment through three simple shots and a final detail that exhibits half a globe immersed in the ice layer. The following shot, belonging to another scene, displays the two protagonists' car on the road, as well as Nishi complaining about his sore hand. Once again, the action is omitted, and what's left is represented by the final result, a simple squashed glove. This solution is definitely comical in a subtle way, indeed. We, the audience, would have expected Nishi roar from the pain or Miyuki regretfully cry. Instead, we're taken to a further moment since any reaction got omitted. The cutting performed once again confirms the distance Kitano wants the spectator to feel from the main character, towards whom any emotional bond is denied.
The last example provides a whim of Kitano's more than a talent of his. Kitano enjoys fooling his public. The proposed scene starts after 33 minutes from the beginning of the film and shows Nishi looking for a car in a car dump. In the first shot, the protagonist looking downward is portrayed by a medium shot. A cat follows. A pair of top-down shot boots puts out a cigarette. The movie camera slowly tilts upwards to finally show half a figure of a girl. At this point, the traditional grammar where the object of focus follows the off-screen look leads us to think that the scene we just watched was a point of view of the character, a hypothesis also reinforced by the camera's movement simulating that of a bottom-up gaze. The audience is used to decode such a conventional language established over years and years of history of film. Kitano plays his last card and surprises us all, showing Nishi from behind, through a white shot, staring at a wreck build-up. The spectators are now demanded more effort and called out to mentally rewrite the plotline, which they misunderstood at first. The setting's geography finally becomes crystal clear, although the director's strategy has played dirty all along. What is the purpose behind the camera movement that first expressed a specific situation and eventually overturned it with the following cut? No Directions essay will provide an answer. The explanation can only be found in the biography of the author, who just couldn't resist such a joke. Perhaps he was trying to remind us, in case we forgot, that we will never be able to anticipate B. Takeshi Kitano, nor should we, even within the quietest context of his, let down our attention. Oh, yeah.